During this video, we are going to talk about feelings and thoughts. For some people, the decision that lead to relapse often are preceded by negative or troubling feelings. It can sometimes feel as though feelings have a life of their own. We may believe it's possible, impossible to understand, predict, or control our emotional responses to people or events. However, feelings and emotions aren't magical. They are part of being human, and we can learn how to think about our feelings in a way that makes it less likely that we will be ruled by what we feel. Recovering people often are told by counselors, family members, and friends that they must learn to deal with their feelings in order to make progress. Dealing with our feelings means accepting that feelings are normal, understanding that thoughts or ideas may influence certain feelings, and talking about our feelings productively. That's without blaming ourselves or others for what we feel. So the key to dealing with feelings is to accept, understand, and talk about them. The inability to recognize and identify our feelings and to express them in appropriate ways causes problems. First, our ability to communicate honestly and assertively with people we care about suffers. This results in relationship difficulties and deprives us of the support we need. Second, when we don't have an avenue for dealing with our feelings openly, we may attempt to medicate those feelings so they won't trouble us. Some people use drugs and alcohol. Others may use food or gambling and so on. As you are aware, however, once the medication wears off, the feelings are still there. A vital part of recovery is learning to recognize and communicate about feelings. In the following video, Jim Morningstar discusses the link between thoughts and feelings and how to communicate them. My name is Jim Morningstar. My thoughts and my feelings shape my life. So let's look at how people's way of thinking and feeling influences their lives. So everything from scientific research to common sense shows that the quality of one's thoughts and feelings over the long run shapes the quality of one's life. As you thinketh, so are you, as the adage goes. Negative thoughts and feelings lead to negative results. Positive thoughts and feelings <clears throat> lead to positive results. So study after scientific study correlates positive affectivity with high measures of subjective well-being. Translated into English, it means happiness. So having a positive attitude is directly correlated to our happiness and negative affectivity to low measures of well-being. So studies have also shown that positive attitude correlates more with positive yeah. events, and negative attitude correlates with negative events happening yeah. in one's yeah. life. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, Couldn't you say world. that then you uh, perhaps you it's, it's when bad stuff or happens nothing. to people that they feel bad and they get a negative attitude. And that people who have good stuff happen to them, oh, 
Well, of course, and they have a positive attitude and are day. more successful in life. So it's all a matter of circumstance. Uh, uh, again, not what research shows. Research was done on people that had events happen to them that most people would say are positive and other events that most people would consider negative. But, uh, so the uh, positive, uh, winning the lottery. Uh, uh, the negative, it's, it's being involved in an accident which one would one leave one paraplegic or quadriplegic. Pretty universally people would say, oh, I'd rather have this than that. But what happens is these uh, people are studied who have these events happen to them in their life, is that after a year's time, their attitudes about life are pretty much the same as they were before the events themselves. Isn't that amazing? The social scientists coined the term hedonic treadmill. <laughs> means that we tend to trudge along in our life with our same attitudes towards it regardless of what happens to us. Events come along. Surely they affect us for a while, but we tend to go back to our time-honored attitudes and feelings about life. The good news is that these attitudes can be changed, is that we're not stuck with them. They're not inbred. We can learn to shift those attitudes and make a difference not only in our lives, but the lives of those around us. Now, it doesn't mean that it's easy to change your way of thinking or feeling or to master it. Um, but it has been undisputedly demonstrated that one can master one's thinking and feeling and thereby influence not only their life, but the course of history. Note those cited early, earlier, uh, Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Gandhi, Cesar Chavez. We have our personal data on this. If I go into a situation with good attitude, I often get good results. Changing our attitude influences our feelings about the results and sometimes the results themselves. But we also know that this doesn't happen 100% of the time. If that was it, end of story, oh great, oh thanks Jim. Gee, glad to hear that, now my life has changed. I'm now, we know that this doesn't work 100% of the time, and there's good reason for that. We may not know what those good reasons are in our life right now. That's the purpose of our getting together and doing this work. There are things that we can't change, and trying to change them just frustrates us. So as the serenity prayer wisely advises, gain the courage to change what we can, accept what we cannot, and have the wisdom to know the difference. But regardless of the events in our life, we're 100% responsible for our thoughts and feelings which shape our perceptions and attitudes, as well as our well sense of well-being and happiness. So I may get fired and see it as the end of the world or as the beginning of a new life. Thus, principle number two, creative thought. My thoughts and my feelings shape my life. So we're going to learn together an essential tool in mind mastery, and that is the distinction between thoughts and feelings. This is bandied about in, in general culture, and without this distinction, uh, there's a lot of confusion and miscommunication in life. So the feelings, mad, sad, glad, and scared, are different than our thoughts, our judgments. Let's look at the second handout. Our thoughts are mental judgments or evaluations. Examples of thoughts are, this is a chair. I like this chair. I don't like this chair. Everyone should sit on a chair in this class. That's a thought. So we judge our thoughts to be right, wrong, good, bad, attractive, or aversive. But these are judgments, too. They're just more thoughts. They're not feelings. 
Feelings are emotional felt experiences which often have thoughts attached to them. So a simple classification of feelings are sadness, is life energy with the thought that I'm missing something. Anger is life energy with the thought I'm not getting what I want. Fear is life energy with the thought that I'm going to be hurt. Gladness, happiness, is life energy with the thought I'm in harmony with what I need and want. So a child can be tossed into the air and think it's the most exhilarating, exciting thing, or they can be scared stiff. It depends on their judgment of the situation. I was raised in a family where anger was not allowed. It did not exist. So I didn't know when I was angry. And I thought I was just a funny guy. Well, I was sarcastic. That wasn't so funny. My anger was coming out indirectly. It took me the willingness to expose and get feedback for, to recognize that, oh, there are things that I want that I'm not voicing. And in not voicing them, I'm building up and getting resentful. And then I'm starting to eh, leak it off to other people. So my intention is that we all will get uh, positive and useful feedback, uh, either through directly working with a partner or in small groups, or just in hearing the sharing of other people. You know, people say, uh, oh, I feel that no one respects me, for example. Well, technically speaking, that's a judgment about myself, that no one respects me. And what are the feelings underneath that? They could be, I'm angry, or they could be, I'm sad, or they could be, I'm scared. If I can know what those feelings are and communicate them, then you're not just guessing what's going on with me or projecting on me. This is going to be part of what we learn about ourselves and what will help our communication. Because so much misunderstanding comes in what's not said about our feelings. Woman in the Mirror covers substance abuse, mental health, and domestic violence. If you need help in these areas, the education and prevention programs at Life Skills Academy can help. Go to lindamcqueen.org. The page will open up to Life Skills Academy. Again, go to lindamcqueen.org. Once you are there, the page will open up to Life Skills Academy. While you are there, please take advantage of our forums, chats, group meetings, webinars, and hangouts. If you have any questions, please email us. A link to the website and email address will be provided below. A certificate of completion will be issued upon completion of courses taken with Life Skills Academy. Life Skills Academy provides a platform for domestic violence survivors and other women's issues. There, they can share stories, heal wounds, and take back their lives. Create your own group in the forum today. Go to lindamcqueen.org. The page will open up to Life Skills Academy. Please leave your comments and subscribe. Remember to like and share. And if any of you can donate to this channel, please do go to lindamcqueen.org to make a donation. Thank you.